Well, let's turn attention to Katsina, where the State Ministry of Women Affairs, in collaboration with the World Assisted Project Arin, had organized training for 722 women on production of nutritional powder to reduce malnutrition in children. This will be achieved through the utilization of background farming for hybrid seed cultivation. TVC News correspondent Ablativ Yusuf reports. <laughs> A simplified method of producing high nutritional feed for children. The newly introduced Garellafia is a mixture of local ingredients needed for healthy growth and balance of children. Improving nutrition in Katsuna State has been a deliberate effort by the state since 2011 to address acute malnutrition affecting children across the state. Available data shows a stunting growth rate of 59.7%, which is the highest recorded in the country, the reason why new and simpler nutritional methods are being adopted. We are going to empower 722 women on how to develop uh, Tom Brown, which we know it's uh, one of the key things that uh, helps in improving the nutrition of children, especially children under, under the ages of uh, five years. You know, um, Accelerating Nutritional Results in Nigeria World, uh, Project is a World Bank funded project that focuses on prevention of malnutrition among children uh, and women, uh, pregnant and lactating women, using a cost effective intervention. Uh, Katsuna State is one of the states that is implementing the project. And you know, this year we try to uh, do programs because the program, the project is ending this year. These participants are selected from the 361 wards of the state to easily cascade the new knowledge down to the grassroots. The State Minister of Women Affairs also explains why it is improving high-grade seeds for the women. The focus of this initiative is to first equip you women with knowledge, skill needed to produce Garilafia, a highly nutritious, locally produced flower that can play a role in improving food security and nutritional outcomes in our communities. Second is to teach innovative techniques of backyard farming. The new move is to promote precautionary measures to push back malnutrition with the use of local ingredients, especially at localities where cases are high. Abdul Latif Yusuf, TVC News, Katana. As the world celebrates Teachers Day, the need to improve on teachers' motivation and morale in order to have quality education in Nigeria dominated conversations at an event held in Lagos. Avimbo Ladmibi has this story. Teachers are often referred to as the backbone of any education system, the foundation on which children discover their full potential and become productive members of the society. Sadly, conversations held at different fora, particularly on the occasion of the World Teachers' Day, have continued to highlight how the teaching force in Nigeria has become demoralized with little or no motivation. Most teachers are leaving the profession. They are leaving the classroom. Most classroom teachers are leaving. And it's alarming because the effect of this would affect the outcome in the, you know, the society in years to come. I was teaching for many years and I got to a crossroad where I almost wanted to give up with the teaching profession because I wasn't um, encouraged with the pay and um, responsibilities attached to me. General believe all over the world that teachers should just be in their space and probably just mind building people without thinking of the welfare of the teacher. Amid these challenges is the need to empower teachers, which is the focus of discussions at this gathering of educators in Lagos. Children, Victoria Ogunladi Ajise is the convener of the Impact Conference for Teachers. It was agreed that the myriad of problems the teachers face, if not addressed, could have a detrimental effect on children's ability to have quality education. Others say that the survival of Nigeria as a viable society depends on the health of its educational institutions. Imagine that these teachers have to come with all the, you know, um, the effects of this 
these challenges upon them, the weight of the challenges, it, it's, it's a lot of, on them. And it takes a lot of courage for a teacher to still come up the following day, day after day, and show up strong in front of the children. So building resilience is a very good theme that we have to um, you know, speak the, to the teachers about and how to build sustainability because if the teachers are not well catered for, how would they put in their best into the work for us to have sustainable education? So it's a very, very good theme. But there are a few countries in the world where they really, teachers themselves come out to say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciated. You know, we, we must all appreciate teachers. You know, you, you can't quantify because what the sacrifice they are making, they, they are the ones that actually help all of us. They the ones that make us, all professions, they taught everybody. They taught the lawyers, they taught the bankers, they taught everybody. You know, I, I don't know how we can ever repay a teacher. So over the years, we build leaders, we build a nation, and we don't get so much celebration um, for teachers. But thanks to some governments, especially people like um, His Excellency, the Lagos State Governor, who is doing a whole lot. A few states are, but I still think that it's not enough, um, and we need to work on it. Beyond the celebration and acknowledgement of the endless sacrifices teachers make in the society, experts read out opportunities educators can leverage on to increase their income as a form of motivation. Abimbola Agbebi, TVC News, Lagos. Women have been advised to always put up their best in any field they find themselves. This advice was given at the Women High Achievers Stripe Conference with its focus on helping women navigate obstacles in the world of work while fostering meaningful relationships. TVC's Barak Agbiremi reports. The McKinsey Global Institute estimates that if women participated in the economy identically to men, they could add as much as $28 trillion or 26% to annual global GDP by 2025. It is against this backdrop that the Women High Achievers Tribe was established. This conference gives participants the opportunity to participate in discussions that will provide them with practical skills for personal and business growth. It's just amazing to see that women really want to see their business grow. They want to be able to sink all of life. How do you sink everything? Being a mom, being a wife, being an entrepreneur. But how do you sink everything to still have a beautiful life? You as a person. The keynote speakers emphasize the need for women to always seek information and remain focused while they envision their future. Then she now had confidence in me and now started making decisions on her behalf and now became a leader. And because she now had that confidence in me, I I too now had that confidence in myself. When you start a business, a lot of times you face difficulties. Like I said, funding is one of it. But the biggest part of it is people and the belief within yourself that you can do this. So you've got to break barriers in so many ways. Speakers at the panel session discussed the importance of understanding money, multiplying wealth, and setting financial goals. As a woman, I would say that I did some money moves just to prove to another young person in this room or young lady in this room to say, it doesn't matter that you're a woman. You need to acclimatize with money. You need to get acquainted with money. You need to realize that money gives you momentum in life. And as you take a moment to reflect on this healing you have experienced, among other activities, a hypnotherapist helped participants recognize the importance of self-care in growing their businesses and life.